Extensions are like a browser superpower. You can make the browser do just about anything you can think of as a developer, and it's amazing. But as a user, it can be kind of scary. So how can Chrome get those superpowers while keeping the web safe? Let's dive in and find out. Every single extension that is shared on the Chrome Web Store goes through a rigorous review process to make sure it's safe for all users. With Manifest V3, we've made some changes to the extensions platform to make it even safer. Remote Hosted Code, or RHC, is something that is largely no longer supported for extensions. There are a few exceptions that we can check out in a little bit, but for the most part, we should be making extensions that no longer have any remote code. So what exactly is remotely hosted code? It's what the Chrome Web Store calls anything that's executed by the browser that is loaded from someplace other than the extension's own package. Keyword there being executed. CSS and JSON, it's just data, totally fine to load from a remote location like your own server. Things like JavaScript or WebAssembly, the browser executes that code so they can't be remote. They have to be in your extension when you submit it to the Chrome Web Store. This rule applies to all code in your extension. Whether it's your code, a dependency, or a dependency of a dependency, it doesn't matter who wrote it or where it came from, it must follow the same rules. You may be wondering, why can't we do this anymore? It was so much easier when I could just update a server file. And I agree, it was. Unfortunately, it means it was also way easier to launch malicious code to Chrome's billions of users. It also means that now with extensions, it can be more robust. Your code can be loaded instantly and won't potentially be slowed down because of a flaky Wi-Fi connection, updated URLs, or issues with the CDN. Requiring all code to be bundled within your extension means that what the Chrome Web Store reviews is exactly what your users will get, keeping the web a safer place. So what happens when you have an RHC violation? Well, after submitting the extension to the store, you'd be rejected with a blue argon error. That's the code that means that our reviewers believe your extension has remotely hosted code. Don't panic, it's not a big deal. We just need to update the code to be more compliant with the new RHC requirements. First, we're gonna check for strings like HTTP or HTTPS in your project. If you have an RHC violation, then you'd likely be able to locate them pretty quickly by searching for that. If you're using a build system or have a dependency like NPM, GitHub, or any third-party source, make sure that you're searching through the compiled version of the code since that's what's being evaluated by the store. If you're still unable to find the problem, then the next step would be to contact one-stop support. They'll be able to outline the specific violations and what's needed to get the extension published as soon as possible. If you did find the violation in your own code, then the fix should be pretty simple. Copy the remotely hosted file into your project and then replace any code that loads the old version with code that loads it from directly within your package. You see, any file in the extension will be available via the Chrome extension URL. So for example, if you saved example.js in the root of your project, then it'd be available at Chrome extension, extension ID hash, example.js. A quick tip to make that easier to remember is to use the Chrome runtime get URL function. You can pass in a path to a file and it will give you the full URL to that file. Sorting out your own code isn't that difficult, but when it's coming from a dependency, it can get a little more tricky. The first thing to do would be to make sure you even need that code anymore. Is this possibly a library or polyfill that you just no longer need? If so, great, remove it. Your violation's taken care of. After that, we can try looking for alternative projects that don't have the same issue. If you can't find one, try reaching out to the owner of the project you are using. Open a bug with them explaining that it's causing issues with web extensions. Many developers can often make small tweaks to their project to accommodate it with very little effort. But what about when you can't wait for an update? <laughs> I get it. I want my code to be shipped yesterday. You don't need to wait for any changes, though. See, with modern build tools, you can make those changes that you want to see right now. If you aren't already using them, then the act of using a build tool may take care of the issue by itself. Tools like Rollup, Webpack, and Vite all have a feature called tree shaking. That's where they remove code not being used by your project while it's packaging it up for you. So try tree shaking, see if it removes the violating code. If it's still there, then no worries. We have a lot more tricks up our sleeve. There are plugins for our build tools that let us modify the generated code. If you just want to remove a line of code you aren't using, you can target it with something like Rollup's plugin replace or Webpack's string replace loader. These are plugins that let you replace arbitrary strings with other arbitrary strings. So we can just target the offending code and replace it with a blank string. Problem solved. If you have a more complex replacement need, then the best option may be something like patch package. This lets you create a git diff file for any part of your project and apply it later on. So larger multi-line or multi-file changes can be repeated and is more readable by both you and your team. And of course, you can always just make your own build tool plugin. These tools have powerful hooks that let you tie directly into the dependency resolution of your project. That means you can take a dynamic import deep within your project and have your tool automatically rewrite it to load the dependency from within your extension. 
In rare cases, there may be some code that isn't able to be bundled within your extension. It may be required to be loaded from a live network connection or just something that's provided by the user and therefore impossible to be included when you publish. Don't worry, we still have a number of options available to you. Some code must be loaded from a CDN for legal or compliance reasons. In those cases, your best option may be to use an iframe. RHC blocking is enforced at runtime using content security policy. This is a browser security feature that we've configured to block remote code. That's because we don't want arbitrary unreviewed code to have access to the incredibly powerful Chrome extension APIs. But once that code is behind the security barrier of an iframe, they no longer have access to those extension APIs. So you can inject an iframe into a page and communicate with that iframe using post message. But what about if your code is in a background script where there isn't a DOM to inject an iframe into? This is a perfect case for off-screen documents. Chrome.offscreen is an API that extension service workers can use to interact with the DOM by creating a single web document. Think of it as a kind of invisible tab. You can use it to inject HTML into, including iframes. If you need to run scripts that are from your users, you obviously can't bundle those scripts with your extension. What you may be looking for is the user scripts API. These are usually small code snippets that are supplied by the user. They're meant to be used by user script managers like Tamper Monkey or Violent Monkey. If those sounds like what you're doing, then check out chrome.userscripts. The extensions platform is an incredibly powerful and evolving ecosystem, and we really appreciate the effort you're going through to keep users safe. If you have any feedback, whether it's about remote hosted code or the extensions platform in general, then the best way you can do that is through our official mailing list. You can find a link to it in the description below. Thank you so much for joining, and we'll see you all soon.